All right, welcome everybody to a good Friday afternoon. Um, first, I want to welcome council members who have joined us. Uh, we have council member Fred Brown, council member Josh McKern, council member Angela Evans, council member Susan Lamb, council member Chuck Ellinger. We may be joined by a couple more council members who said they would try to be here. And I want to welcome Chief Lawrence Weathers and our public safety commissioner, Ken Armstrong, who's in the audience. Thank you for being here. So today, I am here to announce the creation of an after action review group that will examine police discipline policies and procedures, for example, critical incident cases that resulted in discipline approved by council. People across our country, including people here in Lexington, are demanding more accountability and transparency in the way police are disciplined and we have heard them. I want to be clear about this though. I think our police force is excellent. They're well trained. This will not affect an officer's ability to do his or her job. I believe by establishing this process of providing external after action input and review, we can make them even stronger. This committee has the support of Chief Weathers. This committee will shine light on the discipline process by reviewing steps taken in critical incident cases. After reviewing the disciplinary cases, recommendations can be made for long-term improvements where needed. The administration and council members will collaborate to decide the group's permanent structure. We want a structure that will work well in Lexington. So we will move forward immediately. In the past, opportunities have been missed thinking about things we don't have the power to do without legislative approval. This may not be a perfect solution, but it is a solid next step, and it is something we can do now. When the recent protests began a few weeks ago, I called them a rare opportunity for our city. I said the protests could become the foundation of needed changes, and that's what's happening. We've taken time to collaborate with, to listen to the community, an important step in any changes we make. And I'm determined to make improvements quickly and to continue to make immediate changes as opportunities present themselves. And I look forward to working with the council to do this together. So thank you very much and we'll entertain questions. Will this after action review group have discretion to review cases that weren't already uh, approved by council? All discipline has to eventually be approved by council. But it did. So, no, they will not, this will only be cases that have been reviewed and the council has issued their uh, approval or they have changed, made a change. Any other questions? Who, who's going to be on the board? We don't know yet, Beth. Um, that's why I want to work with the council to uh, figure out how we're going to do this. This will be a small group of people, not a uh, really large um, group. There are other cities which do this, and they do it effectively. And we think it's a golden opportunity for us, particularly in these, um, you know, these uh, cases where there uh, has been, um, it's a critical incident, there's been use of force, those kinds of things. Will it be limited only to critical incidents? Yes, for now. What kind of voice are you looking for within this committee? Is this going to be a diverse group? Where are we going to see people coming from? 
I, you know, we haven't fully fleshed it out, but my thinking is that we will need some folks who have knowledge of how police disciplines should work. We want objective people who don't come in with a preconceived idea of what should have happened before they've seen it. Um, we want people who are familiar with processes and procedures and how they operate beginning to end, those kinds of folks. I don't know yet who it is. Um, or who it will be, or exactly how many, it will not be a large group, but this will be an opportunity for us to have some good review. Uh, you know, this is not unlike military operations where there's after action review, which leads to change and other policies that can be implemented. It's that kind of a, of a group. Well, I, you know, much of what, uh, I'll look at this in kind of the broader sense, the question is how can this help? Um, this will be a group that is, has citizens on it, and um, it will be a group that can review exactly whether the procedures in place and the policies led to the action that was appropriate. And so I think it can lead to change with recommendations going forward for long-term change. Seems like the uh, march that black faith leaders did mm -hmm. back in that letter certainly had an impact on today's decision. Is there anything else that from that letter that you all might be looking to implement or having discussions on? Uh, yes, there are several things, and I, I want to step back just a second before I answer your question about what other things can we look at that were in the faith leader's letter. There are many things that we, the council and the mayor, cannot do. We're restricted by law, by um, other guidelines, so what we're looking for is things we can do that can make an immediate impact. So to that question, I think one of the things that as a government we're going to be doing is the review of our minority contractors and how we, um, how we go about increasing the participation in projects by minority contractors. We already do that. The pastors are asking for a 15% participation in that and we've got to We've got to really take a good, hard look at that and how we can achieve that. I think that would be a great thing. And um, they talked about the no-knock warrants, search warrants, and I've already put a, um, a moratorium on those, um, except for life and death situations. I know that the council will be interested in looking that. The commission I'm getting up and running, we'll look at that. You know, these things just need a full vetting. And so there are those sorts of things that can be um, attended to in the future. And with my commission, it will not be a year-long commission or a two-year-long commission. It will be a 60-day commission because I want some action soon. Will this group be able to examine Uh, that hasn't been been determined yet um, as far as the parameters of time, you know, how far back they can look. I, you know, my thinking is that uh, most recent is best because that's what's happening now. Um, council members will certainly, I, I want to know what council members are thinking about those kinds of things and um, what's the best practice. How soon will you be look, looking to fill uh, spots on this review board? Well, that's a great question. Um, I told my staff and some of the council members, I want this to be done quickly, to get it filled in, get the structure set. We'll need some attorneys to help us 
be sure we're doing uh, legal things and the right things. And I envision it will be set up uh, very soon in the next week or two. And it's not something we need to stretch out very long. I think we can do it pretty soon. I just want to clarify, if the council declines to take the disciplinary action, could the review board have power to supersede that decision? No. That's not what this is. So the process, and, and I'm going to talk about the process in front of the chief, which is always dicey because he knows more than I do, but just thinking simply about the discipline process, um, <clears throat> there's a process within the police where they uh, move a discipline forward through their process, which goes to the chief. If I'm a police officer who's being disciplined and I disagree with the discipline, I can always petition council for a hearing. And the council has the right to accept the chief's discipline, to disagree and put on a different discipline. Um, so that's one piece of it. The other piece is many disciplines for police and fire come forward and the officer or the firefighter has agreed to the discipline. And then the council hears some basic information and they vote on it. They are the final approving authority of any discipline in police or fire. It's the council. This process is not meant to get in the middle of the disciplinary process. It's meant to be an after action review. Did it work the way we thought it was supposed to or not? If it didn't, what can we recommend to the chief and the process that would help going forward? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. This we can do without state law change. We can do it without getting in the middle of collective bargaining. We can do this. You there needs to be more uh, state law changes um, to better communities, I guess? Or? Uh, well, what specifically do you mean? There's a whole lot of state laws out there <laughs> that we could ask to be changed. <laughs> Mm -hmm. You have to be careful not to jump over some state laws. Right. 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 Well, we're trying to keep ourselves legal, you know. And there are a lot of things we can't do, the elected officials, and um, because they are embedded in Kentucky statutes or they're embedded in uh, collective bargaining agreements. We've been very careful. This, to what today represents, is not something that I just thought of today. I've had multiple conversations with the chief, the commissioner, other folks to be sure I understood where we are and what we could do and what this opportunity presents for us going forward. So um, I have not yet looked at state law changes. Um, you know, that's. That has not been my focus because the legislature's not in session. And we're looking for things we can do now. And I know that from the council's discussion the other night in their meeting, you, they're looking for things they can do to make good change. So that's kind of where we are in that. Would you support the idea of a civilian review board with subpoena power? Perhaps I would need to see what that looked like and see what I've asked to see is a civilian review board that works, that's effective. Many cities have them. Louisville has one. Um, but I, I am not, I haven't yet looked at those to see if they work the way they're supposed to work. You talked about the collective bargaining agreement. What kind of power would this review board have to not supersede what's been bargained with? Well, the, what we've all this that I've talked about, we are um, we are clear that it is not in the bargaining. It is not it is not touching that. So we can go forward with it. Um, 
you know, I'm not the expert here at bargaining, but basically bargaining is about work, uh, you know, work-related things, work um, for, for the officers. And so we were careful not to go into that work conditions. This is not a disciplinary board. This is an after action review board. Very different. It's, um, I'm trying to think of something that could be similar. If, I mean, I don't know, as journalists, if you have certain processes and procedures that you are supposed to follow. And it would be like if there was a review board that said, okay, here's what happened in this case with this journalist. Did they follow the process the way it was meant to be? Did they follow the procedure the way it was meant to be? And did it, did it work the way it was meant to work? And if it didn't, is there a recommendation that can go forward to the chief and um, to make it better? It, they will not determine discipline. I, I want that to be real clear. That's not the purpose of this board. Um, that would have taken us to a place where we can't go. So this is where we can go and make a difference right now. What else? All right, thank you all for being here. Have a really good weekend. <laughs>